Hi, Donovan here, and in this video, we're going to create an Android app that uses the Camera X API. The app will show a camera preview and have a button that allows the user to take a photo. This video covers adding all of the required dependencies, creating the view layout, and requesting the necessary permissions. Most of this setup applies to both the camera controller and camera provider code paths, unless I specify otherwise. This video is part of the Camera X Foundation series. So if you aren't familiar with the basics of Camera X, go back and watch the Camera X Concepts video. The link is in this video's description. After this video, you can watch the Camera Controller video or the Camera Provider video to see how to finish this photo taking app with each code path. All right, I've got my Android developer shirt on, so I'm ready to go. Let's jump into Android Studio. OK, we'll start off in Android Studio by creating a new project with the empty activity template. You can name your project whatever you'd like. I'm going to call it Camera X app for the purposes of this video. Once Android Studio has finished its setup, open the module build.gradle file to add dependencies for Camera X. First, define the version of Camera X that you need. 1.2.0 is the most recent stable release. You can check all of the Camera X versions in the Camera X releases link in this video's description. Camera X has separate libraries so that you only need to include the dependencies that you need. First, import the Camera Core library and the Camera Camera 2 library. These are the fundamental Camera X libraries. Camera X is built on Camera 2, Android's low-level framework camera API. Conceptually, Camera X takes the set of use cases specified by the developer and combines them into a running Camera 2 capture session. Technically, Camera Camera 2 will indirectly import Camera Core, but we're explicitly including it for demonstration purposes. Next, we need to import the Camera View library to get Camera X's Preview View class. Then, if you'll be using a camera provider, you need to import the camera lifecycle library as well. Also for camera provider, there are some non-camera X dependencies that we'll use. Add the concurrent futures KTX dependency and the lifecycle runtime KTX dependency, like so. Also, check the version of Java your app is using. Camera X needs some methods that are part of Java 8, so we need to set our compile options accordingly. Finally, this example will use view binding, so at the end of the Android block, add a build features block setting view binding to true. Next, go into res slash values slash string.xml to add a label for our take photo button. Then, go to res slash layout slash activity main dot XML to set up the views for this app. First, add Camera X's preview view. You don't have to use a preview view with Camera X if you're using a camera provider, but doing so allows Camera X to handle a number of details for you, like managing the preview lifecycle and choosing a surface implementation on your behalf. Next, define a button that will trigger taking a photo. It has a number of layout settings, and we want to add the take photo text to it. Now, to declare the permissions that the app needs to request, go to the androidmanifest.xml file. The first thing to add is a uses feature tag to declare that this app needs camera hardware. For example, Google Play makes use of this uses feature element from your app manifest to filter your app from devices that do not have a camera. Then add these uses permission tags to request camera access and on devices running Android P and before write external storage access. Now, let's head over to the main activity for the app. First, add a private variable to the main activity for the view binding. We'll initialize this later in the onCreate method. 
Now, if you're going to use a camera controller, declare it here so that we can access it throughout the file once it's initialized. I'll explain this more in the camera controller video. On the other hand, if you're going to use a camera provider, then instead, we need to declare an image capture use case here to have a reference to it throughout the file. OK, now we're back on the code uh, for both camera controller and camera provider. In the onCreate method, initialize the view binding with activity main binding dot inflate. Also, change the call to set content view to pass in view binding dot root. Next, add a companion object to main activity with some app constants. The tag constant is used whenever we need the app name, such as for logging. The file name format will be used to name saved images. Then we'll have some permission utilities that we'll use in a minute. Set the required permissions to have camera, and if your app targets Android P or before, you'll also want to add write external storage. If you don't need to target those older versions, you can remove this call to apply. The has permissions function will tell us if all permissions have already been granted. Then save a reference to the activity result launcher returned from calling register for activity result for multiple permissions passing in an activity result callback as a Lambda function, where we check if all of the required permissions were indeed granted. This app can't do anything without camera permissions. So if they aren't granted, the app is unusable. In any app you release to users, you should gracefully handle cases where permissions aren't granted. See the guide on requesting runtime permissions in the video description below for more. In this app, if the permissions weren't granted, all we can do is display a message stating that the permissions were denied. If all permissions were granted, then start the camera. The start camera implementation will be discussed in the next video. We have one more thing to do. So finally, add this code to the onCreate method to check if the required permissions were granted in a previous session. If not, then launch the permissions activity request launcher to request them now. If all of the necessary permissions are there, then you can go ahead and start the camera. The next thing to do is to define the start camera function. But like I mentioned earlier, that will be covered in the next video. There are two ways to implement start camera using camera X. You can use a camera controller or a camera provider. Camera controller requires less setup code, and as a result, camera controller handles more functionality for you. For example, it provides out of the box, tap to focus and pinch to zoom functionality. On the other hand, camera provider allows for more control, but that means that you'll have to handle more of this setup yourself. Examples of customizations you can add with camera provider are enabling output image rotation or setting the output image format in image analysis. Both Camera Controller and Camera Provider have their own videos that I hope you check out next. So pick the one best for your needs, and I'll see you in the next one.